Um, let's see, is Ryan, let's do this. Ryan, waiting for Ryan to connect. Here we go. In three, two, one, we did it. All right, it works on, so you, you have Instagram uh, angels and, and mine is broken, so. I think you're just way more popular and you probably had like a million people asking to go live. I had three, so no, but I that, don't know. That happens, that happens all the time, like when we go live and you get like 50 requests, but then typically you can click it and then it shows you all the requests and then you click the person you want to request and this time it didn't do it. Anyway. Uh, where are you, by the way? Where, where Are you headed to a listing? Yeah. A million we're, dollar we're, listing? We're yeah, I'm going to show a townhouse for $8 million on the Upper East Side. Um, it's nice. It's beautiful outside. It's, uh, it's cold. It are, so what's, it go, what's going on in New York? Are, are things flying? Are, 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 like, are you having the best year of your business? What's going on? Oh, no. I started, <laughs> uh, started my own business last year. I know we've spoken about that. But, uh, but New York is, is slowly coming back. As the vaccine rolls out, people start to come back, but a lot of people still aren't back at the office. Um, uh, a lot of kids aren't back at school yet, but New York is going to be great over the next couple of years, um, but uh, it's going to be a slow process. But listen, I, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this. And now we're on, on your page. Um, uh, and people who follow me have been following this whole thing. I've had my book. Um, Congratulations. Lit. I'm so happy it's, for you. It's, it's been so strapped. Fun. It's literally strapped to my hand for 30 days um, so that we can, because I want to hit the New York Times bestseller list. And I figured, okay, well, if people will pre-order because they'll see me uh, uncomfortably living my life this way. And now I'm taking it, I'm unstrapping it because the actual book just showed up today from the publisher. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and uh, I wanted to, there's, there's these things in the book that are called codes where, you know, in Sell Like Sirhan, I came up with these like sales secrets and this, I came up with big money energy codes. So I've got a codes to live by. And there's one that when I was uh, kind of, when I was writing it, I was thinking about, um, I was thinking about you actually. And so I want to read it to you and okay. I just want you to tell me what you think about it. And we'll talk about it for a second and then I'll let you go back to living your life. <laughs> Sound good? Okay. Sounds great. And we can do this anytime you want. We can come back yeah. to this. No, how do you get it? How do you get sparkle faces on Instagram? Oh, live? Yeah. There's like butterflies Instagram flying definitely around. definitely likes me more than you. I think that is obvious from this. I don't you get know, that you, before either. Before you go live, you can pick a filter. Yeah. You should okay. do oh. that. Like surprise your audience. Pick a filter before you go live. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Wonderful. Um, all right. So on page 104, uh, code number nine, okay, is... If you want to convince someone to spend more, never focus on the money, focus on the value. Yeah. What do you think about that? I one? agree with that. And you know, another way that I totally agree. And I think another way that I have more or less expressed this is when you're thinking about a financial decision, Yeah. obviously there's going to be numbers involved. Okay. But what is the life decision that you're really making with this financial decision? And um, I think a lot of us get more excited about thinking about life than we do thinking about money sometimes. Yeah, so always. so I think what, however I can help people make healthier choices, sometimes it's about changing the framework. And so, yes, obviously buying a home, starting a business, starting a family, all carry price tags. And sometimes that overwhelms us. So, okay, put that aside for a minute. What is the actual life decision that you want to make? And how is this house, how is this family, how is this business going to make you more fulfilled? And I think once you get there and get excited about that and have that firmed up, then you can go back to dealing with the numbers and you can feel more empowered and excited and less um, overwhelmed and anxious. So I love that. I love that message um, because truly you know, every financial, and I'm writing actually a book about this myself and how I, oh, good. Learned, oh, yeah, sort of like over the years, 20 years, Ryan, I've given financial advice, but really I'm giving life advice. And, and if, there, if, and I do think I've come up with sort of a framework for how to make good decisions about your money, but really about anything that's of importance. Um, so it's, it's supposed to, it's, it's not a very serious book, but it's supposed to be like a book that hopefully will be you know, inviting, but not enough about that book that hasn't even been sold yet. This is your book. Tell, show no, me I, love, I love it. I'm going to strap it. I'm going to, I'm going to strap your book to my other hand. Okay. 
Um, okay, when, great. when you finish it, that's, that's what we're going <laughs> to do. hold you accountable to that. What, what do you, great. Good. What, what do you say to people though, who say, well, how, you know, I can't just focus on the value, Ryan, because I, I got to know if they can afford it. I got to talk to them about money. I can't close without talking to them about money. That's stupid. That doesn't make sense. Um, uh, you know, how do you focus? I mean, like, how do you focus just on the value of something without getting people so overworked and worked up about the actual dollar amount? So value is such a personal definition. Like how we, how I value something versus you is going to be completely different. Um, you know, uh, I always like to tell people like, um, imagine how your life might change or improve um, once you're, you know, once you've made this purchase, once you've made this decision, like what, yeah. what would, how is this going to make you fulfilled? And that's for some people, not just, you know, money. It's like, how does, how's this going to make you feel? How's this going to make you breathe better? How's this going to allow you to have that family you wanted? Or, you know, if I love to entertain. So like when I purchase homes, it's always been about like, making sure that I can comfortably fit, you know, 20 people inside. And, you know, even if I've, yeah. I've had a 400 square foot studio and I've definitely fit like 30 people inside. So it doesn't have to be a big place, but like value really comes down to your personal values and there's no wrong answer. I think that's also really important to convey to people that um, no judgment, you know, your values are your values. And once and that's the first thing you need to figure out like i don't want you to think about the money at first actually i want you to think about what's important to you and then i think you can go back to the numbers with more like clarity that. and you can you know you can figure out like does this really align is this really yeah. going to give me the value yeah I, I like that i think that's a good um uh you know my this book isn't about selling or or sales per se the say the way my, my first book was so specifically focused on on how to sell but um I like the idea of if you're in a situation with somebody that surrounds money to, uh, to only talk about value first and not talk about the dollars because the dollars are always going to come to it. You're going to have to get there eventually. Right. Uh, and I, and I just went under another underpass, um, <laughs> and, uh, overpass. And, uh, and I think that, you know, it's always been easier for me to negotiate with the way someone feels rather than negotiate with their wallet. Like yeah. I can't change how much money you have in your wallet, but I can change how you possibly feel about something, how you, you know, what your perspective is, um, uh, you know, how, how it, how it makes sense to your world. Um, so yeah, I, I like that. And I think it's a much healthier way for people to talk to each other about their own money. Right. Yeah. It's a great icebreaker, you know, yeah. um, whether it's a, it's a client relationship or it's a partnership or, you know, to talk, people don't want to talk about money but they want to talk about goals they want to talk about value they want to talk about life but really like it's a great gateway to talking about then what you're willing to pay for getting that value you know yeah. you might realize that if you're just chasing if you're just looking at something purely as a cost um you may be missing like you may not realize that you're in the wrong price racket like maybe you don't need to spend that much because what you're really looking for is something different but we sometimes associate there's cultural like we just think that like if something is a million dollars then it's necessarily going to be this way yeah. but it doesn't have to be you know especially in the world we live in now everything's like so custom and different and um i yeah I, especially when it comes to real estate people i find it folks so i'm sure you come across this all the time people who list such an emotional attachment to their home and they think that that's yes. somehow going to translate to the to the buyer it's not you know unless the buyer Always. is you um yeah <laughs> yeah my 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 last question for you and i want to make sure that we have enough time for it um it, because a, a big part of this for me came up during quarantine actually uh when everyone was stuck at home people were losing their jobs left and right a lot of people were in really really tough situations and I found that so many people uh, run their level of personal confidence parallel with their level of income. If they don't make a lot of money, they have no personal confidence. If they make a lot of money, they have too much confidence. What, what advice would you give to, uh, you know, to anybody, but, uh, you know, men and women out there right now who um, uh, might feel down and out 
because they're not making any money or they had to take a pay reduction to keep their job uh, or they've been furloughed and they don't know what to do. How can those people stay confident and detach themselves from their income to allow themselves to go out and live the biggest life possible? Yeah. I love this question. And I, I will say that firstly, self-worth is not net worth. I know that's easier said than felt, but okay. You lost your job. You got furloughed. That yeah. sucks. Yeah. What was actually taken away from you? Your paycheck, your job. But what wasn't taken away from you? What do you still have that nobody can take away from you that is actually the reason why you got the job in the first place? Your brilliance, your skills, your uh, perseverance, your network, your strategy, um, your dedication, your hard work, all of that. That has not been stripped of you. Yeah. That job went away. It wasn't even personal. You know, like it wasn't because of all of it was, it was because, like, look outside, you know, we have a, a health crisis since, like, we haven't seen in a century. Um, on top of that, a recession. On top of that, last week's coup. So, like, things are a little uneasy right now. Don't take it personally. If, and, I, and, and that is it. That is it. You have still all the most important things yeah. with you that have stayed with you that are going to get you the next job. And I always feel this, is, this may not feel like that in the moment, but I've been laid off. Some of the best decisions are in life, I always say, are the ones that are made for you. Okay. Yeah. No, I if listen. Are, I agree. If you got laid off from this job, maybe you didn't really like it anyway, but it was a job. And maybe yeah. over the years you've been like, I really need to find a new job. I really need to get out of this. And you never did it. And yeah. you never did it. So now guess what? You have to. Um, yeah. you got the kick in the pants. So really it's hard. I know. In the moment you can't see through the clouds, but I've talked to people on my podcast that have been completely left broke because they gave all their money to Bernie Madoff, okay? Everyone's yeah. got a really hard story that they can't even believe. Um, they, they feel victimized. But how they got through it was rather than focus on what they don't have, don't focus on the job you don't have. What's focus the point? Focus on what you do have, yeah. Focus on what you do have, and that is going to be the difference between what makes winners versus losers. If you want to stay miserable, focus on the misery. I, I love it. That's a great answer. Um, let's end it there. You've been awesome. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I wanted this to be quick. Thank you so much for diving into this, this code of Big Money Energy with me. Thank you for hosting, hosting the Instagram Live Anytime. when Instagram rejected me. Next time, uh, remember the filters. I will, the filters. You're the best. I'll see you later. Love you. Bye. Bye.